What if I told you that Stanford scientists just reversed autism symptoms in mice using epilepsy drugs? We're talking about completely eliminating repetitive behaviors, social withdrawal and seizures, all by targeting one specific brain region that no one suspected was the problem. This isn't just another mouse study. This could change how we understand and treat autism in humans. I am Tomasz and this is Clinical Breakdown. Here why this research is significant. Autism affects 1 in 36 children. For decades we thought autism was caused by problems throughout the entire brain. Hundreds of genes, multiple brain regions, complex developmental issues. But this Stanford study suggests something completely different. What if autism symptoms come from overactive brain region? The reticular thalamic nucleus. We've probably never heard of it. It's a tiny cluster of neurons deep in your brain that acts like a volume control for all incoming information. When this region becomes hyperactive, it creates sensory sensitivity, social difficulties, repetitive behaviors and what we see in autism. The breakthrough? Stanford researchers use epilepsy drugs to calm down this brain region. And the autism disappeared. Completely reversed in living mice. This isn't theoretical treatment. This is proof that autism symptoms can be turned off, like a switch. Let me break down how they achieved these remarkable results. The researchers focused on mice with genetic mutation called CNT-NAP2. Those mice show autism-like behaviors that mirror human autism. Social withdrawal, repetitive actions, seizure sensitivity, motor hyperactivity. Using brain recordings, they discovered something unexpected. The reticular thalamic nucleus was firing frantically, like a knob, like a broken volume knob stuck on, stuck on maximum. The reticular thalamic nucleus sits between your thalamus and your cortex. Think of it as a, your brain gatekeeper. It decides which sensory information gets through to your conscious awareness. When it's working normally, it filters out unnecessary noise. You can focus on conversation in crowded room. You can ignore the feeling of clothes on your skin. But when it becomes hyperactive, everything gets through. Every sound, every touch, every visual detail floods your consciousness. The Stanford team tried two approaches. First, they used epilepsy medication to reduce neuron firing. Second, they used genetic techniques to selectively shut down neurons in this region. Both methods worked. The mouse, the mice autism symptoms disappeared. Social interactions improved. Repetitive behaviors stopped. Seizure sensitivity vanished. Motor hyperactivity normalized. The researchers found that hyperactive reticular thalamic neurons were generating too much T-type calcium current. These calcium currents make neurons fire and burst instead of steady patterns. The epilepsy drugs block those calcium channels. Restoring, no, by, by, by that, they restored normal firing patterns and eliminated autism symptoms. Here's the most remarkable part of all of this. When they stopped the treatment, autism symptoms returned. When they restarted treatment, symptoms disappeared again. This proves the symptoms are actively maintained by this brain region, not permanently developmental damage, but ongoing dysfunction, dysfunction that can be corrected. So what does this actually mean for understanding autism? First, this, change, this challenges the idea that autism is whole brain developmental disorder. Instead, instead, it might be dysfunction to one related to one specific brain circuit. Second, it explains why autism often occurs with epilepsy. Both conditions involve hyperactive brain region. But let's be realistic about the limitations of that study. It used mice, not humans. Mouse brain are way simpler than human's brain. We don't know also if human autism involves the same mechanism. Also, this specific mouse model represents only one type of autism. Human autism is way more diverse. diverse. However, the potential is substantial. If these mechanisms apply to humans, existing epilepsy drugs could be repurposed to treat autism treatment. We would need to develop new medications. 
we could start clinical trials immediately. And the bigger picture. This study suggests that some neurodevelopmental conditions might be reversible. Not permanent brain damage, but ongoing circuit dysfunction that we can potentially fix. What does this mean for you? If you have autism or your loved ones have, this research offers hope that core symptoms might be treatable with existing medications. But remember, this is early stage research. Human trials haven't even started. For parents, this study suggests autism symptoms might be more treatable than previously thought. Keep following current treatment while researchers will work on translating those findings. For everyone else, this research shows how one small brain region can have massive effect on behavior and consciousness. The reality check is these clinical trials will take years. Current autism support and therapies remain essential. But there's a real hope. This study proves autism symptoms can be reversed in living animals. That's never been done before. Stanford just proved that autism symptoms can be turned off like a switch by targeting one tiny brain region most people never heard of. This is Clinical Breakdown, where we decode the research that could change everything. Hit subscribe for more breakthroughs and tell me, would you try epilepsy drugs if they could reduce your autism symptoms? Sometimes the biggest discoveries happen in the smallest places.